The scripture today is from Ezekiel 13, 8 to 12. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because of your false words and lying visions, I am against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people in the records of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord, because they lead my people astray, saying peace when there is no peace, because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore, Tell those who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. Rain will come in torrents, and I will send down hailstones hurtling down, and violent winds will burst forth. When the wall collapses, will people not ask you, where is the whitewash you covered it with? May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Of My sin, not in part, but the whole, has been nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is well, it is well with my soul. Let's take a closer look at Ezekiel 13. I'm in the middle of a three-part series on the geography of grace. My sub-themes this morning is keeping it real. You've already heard the scripture, I won't read any more of it, but for 10 years before Ezekiel wrote this scroll, false prophets were saying peace when there was no peace. There had been two invasions of Jerusalem, and thus far the city had not been destroyed. A remnant remained in the city, and the false prophet said that the city would not be destroyed, but Ezekiel foresaw a third invasion when the city would be destroyed and all the men carried away to Babylon in exile. Yes, things were going to get worse for Judah. But we know that false optimism is not relegated to Ezekiel's time. It's the same unreality of false information that plagues our world today. Some people call it fake news. I was hacked last September A person writing the email asked hundreds of my friends if they would do me a favor, get two $200 gift cards to help me. (laughs) Fortunately, I had a housemate at the time, and she was sitting right in the car when her phone dinged, and she said, why are you sending me an email asking for help? (laughs) And of course, it was not true. But oh, so much false information floating throughout the internet these days. Be careful. Lying spirits are lurking everywhere in our digital world. Be sure you have security on all your devices and change your passwords. Yes, people like to say peace, peace. There is no peace. At a time when we're being asked to go paperless in most business transactions, we're more vulnerable than ever. Some may say that things are just fine, but things are not fine. Last year, I had a call from one of my spiritual daughters letting me know that her job had ended December 2019, and she couldn't yet find a job. She ended up having to relocate to Memphis, Tennessee. She's over 50 and couldn't take any job that required standing on her feet all day. Many of the jobs available are for younger people. Amen? She has a special needs son, and she had searched not only in the DMV, but also in Texas, where her other son lived, and in her hometown of Alabama, her home state, I should say. She represents millions of Americans who are behind in their rent or mortgages with no relief in sight. For them, things are not fine. The rich and powerful are living in a fantasy bubble of prosperity, while many Americans are struggling. We know what COVID has done. Almost a million people have died. Yes, the false prophets say peace when there is no peace. 
But thank God for the Ezekiels of this world. God always sends a prophet of truth among all the lies and misinformation that his people are being bombarded with. Jesus said, you must worship God in spirit and in truth. But sometimes truth is difficult to discern, especially when we don't have all the facts. For example, Russian President Putin is saying that the Ukrainians are Russian, and he's just trying to liberate them. The, Uruca the Ukrainian president says they are not Russians, but they are a sovereign, democratic nation fighting for their freedom. And of course, our sentiments are on the side of the Ukrainians this morning. And this morning, we can cheer them on with glory to Ukraine. Can I hear you say that? We weep to see families separated and hundreds of thousands of women and children fleeing their countries while others are hunkering in bomb shelters hoping that the worst won't happen. And now the American press and other media have been pushed out of Russia and they have a law to imprison anyone who uses the word war or invasion. The false prophets cry peace when there is no peace. I remember Pastor Jasmine Schoolark preaching a wonderful Easter sermon. She said, when Jesus rode on, rose on Easter morning, truth got out. You see, fantasies won't do, neither will make believe. We've got to face the cold, hard facts of where we are and figure out how to get the glory back. I thank God for Ezekiel, who said that the glory will return. We can go from curse to blessing. And God appointed Ezekiel to be a watchman for the house of Israel. That means he had to be a truth teller. Today as never before, we must be careful. Lord, deliver us from deep denial and delusion. We must be radically honest about who God is and who we are. I contend that if you don't, you can never know who God is if you don't know or come to grips with who you are. Keeping it real. Just keeping it real. This first Sunday in Lent, I pray for a true and renewed repentance among all of us. Starting with myself, I need God to humble me, cleanse my ways, purify my thinking, and set me on a course of action that radiates his love. Let me comment on an image in Ezekiel 13 the mud brick wall. It suffers from winter rains and hailstorms. It must be kept in continuous state of repair. The false prophets only put a veneer on the wall and did not contribute to its ability to withstand the storms because the materials were not sound and the workmanship was poor. Now this did not upset them. They just used buckets of whitewash to splash all over it so that it appeared admirable, covering up reality. And the same thing happens today. Advertisers make shoddy products, but they make them appear adequate. Preachers appropriate to the gospel the latest pop culture without asking are the times in which we live right or wrong. All so much whitewash dabbed on a wall that the first strong wind will bring crashing down. But how about many of us? Are we like that? We look good on the outside, but inwardly, what is going on? It's the sin of hypocrisy and pretense that Jesus severely criticized true of us. This is serious business. We can never be restored to wholeness until we figure out what God expects from us. We can say we're all right, but what if God is not pleased with our worship? What if we are saying peace when there is no peace? Not to worry. <laughs> you know, the diagnosis is always longer than the remedy. That's a little preaching inside, inside thing, but there is a way out of this dilemma we're in. There is a path to victory. Praise God. And that path is repent. That bridge is repent, repent, repent. The kingdom is at hand. It's what John the Baptist preached. It's what Jesus preached. 
and it's what Lent is all about. Ezekiel told the people of his day, if you repent, restoration is coming, peace is coming, glory is coming. But to get it, you've got to get to where God is. And my friends, Jesus is the bridge. If you want to know where God is, go to Jesus. He's the bridge. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So find him. Give him your heart. But give him your hand. See, God has already won the battle for you, for your soul. It's already been done. And you can make new choices. Last week, I talked about starting at the altar and growing from one degree of grace to another so that we neither believe the false prophets nor become them. That's a danger. I don't want to believe them, and Lord help me, I don't want to be one. When we're radically honest and repent, grace renames the places we inhabit. I think I said that last week. Yes, Grace is God's unmerited favor, and yes, it is free to everyone all the time, but it is not cheap. God paid a price. Jesus paid a price. Always remember that. Remember Jesus said again and again, go in peace, but sin no more. Is grace a license to sin? Paul said, no, God forbid. Therefore, I pray, Lord, lead me, lest I stray. This Lent, we consecrate a fast, asking for God's grace to lead and guide Bethany Christian Church to your new pastor. And remember that beautiful song entitled, The Prayer? It says, lead us to a place, guide us with your grace, a place where we'll be saved. And for me, that's always, lead me to Calvary. See, human history experienced its greatest intersection of geography and grace on a hill far away when our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Because of this once and for all sacrifice, and because he died, the book of Romans declares God will give us everything we need. You will lack nothing. Hallelujah. Our redemption is nigh. God has done the heavy lifting. And we shall forever sing his praise. This is a great so Sunday to be singing. Thank you, Kathy. In fact, I remember last hearing you sing Amazing Grace right there. Amen. Praise God. Yes, God's grace is still flowing down Golgotha's hill, spreading its pool over those at the bottom. Maybe it's over here, maybe it's over there, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Poland, behind us, beside us, up ahead of us. Don't rest until you find it. Find it in prayer. Find it in the spirit. Find it in God's word. Find it within yourself. Keep it on your mind and in your heart. Get to where God is. I thank God this morning for his amazing grace that saved a sinner like me. I like what I said in the beginning. My sins, not in part but in whole, have been nailed to that cross. I bear them no more. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Lost is geography. It means I was in the wrong place. I had to get to where God was. I was blind, but now I see. I needed a different perspective. Yes, God is calling us to turn our eyes outward into God's world, a world that he still loves, and give it a more honest look. Keep it real. To keep it real, we have to look at war. We have to look at disease, health care, and racial disparity. We have to look at policing. We have to look at poverty and see that there's a lot of work to be done. God's people are struggling. Right now, the people of Ukraine are struggling right at this very moment. Who's going to dry their tears? Who's going to comfort them? And who's going to lift their heavy burdens? They're asking inside of themselves. Well, in the time of war, Ezekiel saw an eternal river flowing from the altar of God that was healing the land and providing for God's people. But it only could come once the people turned.
turn back to God. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Let me talk to you. I heard another pastor say that during Lent we should eat better, stress less, love more, move more, and give financially. Can I say those? So if I had a screen up there, Jamie, we put it up on the screen so you remember. Eat better, stress less, love more, move more, and give sacrificially. That's keeping it real because you know we don't eat like we should. And you know we stress out over many things. When Jesus said repeatedly, don't be anxious over anything. We know we don't love ourselves, God, or our neighbors as much as we should. We're judgmental and guilty a lot. And since the pandemic, we haven't been as active as, used to be, as we used to be. Our walking and swimming and movement have been curtailed. But Lent is the time to get back out there. And I'm going to do that as soon as my taxes are done. <laughs> and you know we don't give to the poor and needy as the word of God commands. You know that. We've got to keep it real. And I know, sure enough, you've not been giving your tithe and offerings to the church every week like we should and maybe we've done in the past. Keeping it real, we've been on the, the church of the mattress, I call it. Letting the offering pan pass us by. I know I'm right. Let's be honest with ourselves and with God, and let's make a change. Can we start right now? Because God has been too good to us, and Jesus is constantly seeking to turn us from our trifling ways to be better and to do better. One of my students, Harrison Benton, gave me a print of his painting, his painting entitled Grace. It depicted Jesus with the woman caught in adultery, John 8. Her accusers are standing to one side, and she's kneeling, ready to be stoned. And Jesus is stooped down, writing in the sand. Now, the Bible does not say what Jesus wrote that day, but from the artist's mind, in the center of the picture are five letters, G-R-A-C-E, grace. I showed that print to my friend who was head of the baby clinic at Washington Hospital Center in D.C. And at the time, she had a female patient who had contracted AIDS through no fault of her own. The health professionals were concerned that the baby might be born with the virus. And we all prayed, and fortunately, she was not, the baby was not born with AIDS. So the mother named her little girl Grace. My friend purchased the print for her patient and herself, and it hangs near my bed, and I'm reminded of God's grace every day. That's what we need in Ukraine and in Russia and Poland and all over the world where there are conflicts, God's grace. We need God's grace. So, but for the grace go I, that's keeping it real. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. That's keeping it real. Grace woke me up this morning. Grace started me on my way. Grace makes you love all your enemies. And best of all, it brightened up your day. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless you. Jesus is that bridge to God, and that bridge to Jesus is repentance, confession of faith, and baptism. There is nothing you have thought or done that God cannot forgive. Jesus' blood stands ready to be applied to your sins. You can be washed clean by the saving power of God who wants all to be saved. This is your moment, this is your time to get right with God and to inherit eternal life.
This is also your time to connect with other believers in a gathered community of faith. Bethany Christian Church is a wonderful place to belong and to connect with others who are on their journey, the same journey as you. So as we sing this hymn of the church, come forward as a new member of Bethany or to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. And if you have not been baptized, come forward to be baptized. So let us stand and sing together. Is there one? I say greetings to my virtual audience, to those who are out there on Zoom and Facebook. Come on in, come on in. We want you also to know that Christ is right there with you. Receive him into your heart. 